What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Light, a place where you're gonna learn God's word that's gonna change you and improve you. I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional from Rhapsody of Realities by Pastor Chris. And today we're gonna to be reviewing one of the articles from the devotional, and we're gonna analyze the scriptures together, do a Bible study, and I hope you'll be blessed. So let's get it. It says today's topic is about it's about your mind. That's the title. And it's uh, our theme scripture is from Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. I'll read the scripture, then we can look at the scriptures together. It says, And Abraham was old, well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. There are people who think it is okay to be poor. Right? Um, and that the poorer you are, the closer you are to God. One can't but wonder how they came to such a twisted, errone erroneous belief. God does not want his children poor. The poor can't help the poor. Neither can the poor take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Wow, wow, wow. This is an interesting topic. It's a big topic. It's a lot of, um, there's a lot to say about this. And like, I'm, I'm going to go back to the theme script. It's, it's about your mind. And Pastor Chris is talking about a mindset. We're looking about the mindset of poverty and how people think about riches and and, and 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 being rich and being poor. And this is a common belief. People think like if you're if you're maybe a rich, you probably got your money unrighteously. You probably stole from some from someone. Um, it's like people associate poverty with being humble. <laughs> Have you noticed that? That's like a worldly worldly mentality. Say if you're poor, you're humble. You must not be. In, uh, you're not extravagant, you're not living lavishly, so you must be a nice person. But Pastor Christ to the Rhapsody says, that is a twisted and erroneous belief. God does not want his children poor because God is not poor and we're his kids. He says, the poor cannot help the poor. If we are, if we are to he lived other folks, we need to be rich. He says, neither can the poor take the gospel to the ends of the earth, which is the most important thing. This gospel must be preached until the end comes. And it needs money to be on TV. It needs money for the gospel to be on the radios, to, to be on books, to go to distant lands. All that needs money. And if you don't have money, no one can hear the gospel of the poor. Um, it just reminds me of a story. There's a story in um, in Proverbs. It talks about, you know, Solomon was the, one, it was the richest, one of the richest men that ever lived before Jesus came. And before the new creation, we came in the scene because we are heirs of Christ. And everything that belongs to Christ belongs to us. So we are richer than even Solomon was. But anyway, Solomon in his riches, um, he would, and God made him one of the wisest men before Jesus came, until we came in the scene. He tells this story of how nobody hears the wisdom of a poor man. If you're poor, no one wants to listen to you. You might have the right information. You might have good advice. You might try to help folks. But because you're poor, and your voice is not amplified. No one wants to listen to you. People, people listen to someone that that's lavish and and and, and that, that the, the person that's loud. You know what wealth gives you amplitude. You can be anywhere, any place. You can be brash and loud and just saturate your message, and people will listen to you because you have the money. But if you're poor and you can only be in one place and you can preach to probably preach the gospel in one spot, no one will listen to you because you don't have the money to go for. Let me show you this. Um, this scripture, this is quite an interesting scripture about um, how being, you could even be wise and poor. That's not a good combination. People say, oh, as long as I'm, I'm nice, I have my own food, I, I, I close myself, I'm fine. No, it's beyond yourself. Being wealthy is nothing to do with just you being by a, uh, wealthy, you and your own family. It's beyond you. It's for the whole world. It's to help others. It's to lift others. It's to preach the gospel. Let me find this scripture. So, I am reading from the book of Ex Ecclesiastics, chapter 9, and verse 14. And he says, this is Solomon giving one of his proverbs. And he says, and observations. He says, there was a little city and, a f and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it, against this small city. Now there was found in it a poor, wise man. Note the words. 
a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered that same poor man. Can you see that? It says, this city was under attack by a great king, but in that small city there was found someone who was the poor wise man with his wisdom helped deliver that city. But he said, yet nobody remembered that same poor man. Then Solomon said, then I said, uh, then I said, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. Did you see that? He says, wisdom is good because number one, this king came and besieged his city and he took the wisdom, this little poor man that helped deliver the city. But he said, it's cool to have wisdom because it's better than strength. But he says, nevertheless, if you're poor, no one's going to hear your words. No one's going to remember you. You won't have a legacy. No one's going to remember you. It's a fact. It rich, you, you, you know, wealth is an amplitude. Wealth amplifies your message. Wealth amplifies your wisdom. It causes you to have rich. It causes you to have scope. That's what it does. So you, can't, you refuse to choose the mentality of poverty or to, to embrace poverty like it's a humble thing. Being poor is nothing being humble, being poor. Because we, um, our father is not poor. He says, the, the Lord says that the silver, the gold belongs to him. So he's not poor. The world is his. If we are to emulate anyone, we emulate Jesus and we emulate God the Father. He's not poor. You know, let's go back here. Let's go back to this message real quick. Um, second prophet says, The Lord said through the prof prophet in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 7, My cities through prosperity shall yet spread abroad. He didn't say through poverty. Don't believe in poverty. It is not from God. If God truly saved your soul, which is so important, then he must have made provisions to prosper you. This is big. He says, God, if God, God did not just save your spirit. Number one, before you even go into that, he says, my city is here means God's kingdom, God's message will spread through prosperity. Remember that story we just read, a poor, poor wise man's words are not heard. We got wise words from the kingdom of heaven. If we don't have the money, if we are broke and poor, no one will hear these words. These words can't be on TV. These words, we can't even be on, 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 on social network. We can't be preaching the gospel everywhere because it takes wealth and prosperity to spread the message. If you're poor, you're limited of how far your message can go, how far you can reach. So that's number one. And then number two, he says, God, God did not only save you, your spirit, and say, oh, he saved you, oh, your spirit is fine, and he left you. I don't care about anything else, your physical being, well-being, that's up to you. No, I'm going to save your soul. No, God saved us, soul, body, soul, spirit, and soul. He made us prosperous in every area. And I want to show you this. Let's go to the book of the third piece of John. He talks about this is God's desire for us. Uh, that piece of John, uh, chapter one is only one. Chapter one, yeah, verse one. Uh, chapter no, third piece of John, chapter one, verse two. This is God saying. This is God's thought. He says, "Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth." Can you see that? body, soul, and spirit, prosperity. He says, I want, I wish it above everything that you may prosper and also be in health and also your soul prospering. So he wants you to prosper materially, to prosper in your health, to prosper in your soul, body, soul, and spirit. The soul represents the spirit actually and the body obviously your health and then there's pro that of prosperity it's talking about physical prosperity things in this world prospering winning successful having all that you require for life not begging not in need not in lack or in want that is not the, the, the kind of god we serve he does not want his kids poor and say, oh i saved your soul so now be humble by being broke be, being broke has no humility you know you know why christ took our poverty so let me show you that let's talk so let's go there let's go there second corinthians 
chapter 8 verse 9 that's where that scripture is chapter 8 verse 9 it says for we know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich jesus was rich the wealth of the world belongs to christ he said though he was rich yet for your sakes he took poverty he became poor that through his poverty you might be rich that was Christ. He said he was rich. He said, look, if you're trying to say God is, bro is broken, poor, he said, Christ, we know the grace of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, Jesus was always rich, but he took on our poverty. In exchange, he gave us his riches. That through his riches, we might be rich. Through, uh, through him being poor, we might be rich through his riches. There was an exchange. He took our poverty. We took his riches. His uncalculable riches, which riches that no man can search out, riches that are beyond this world. Um, that's what Jesus did, and it's important for us to note that. And I want to show you this. I mean, and we keep on referencing this scripture, but we, we need to see Christ's riches. Chapter 3, verse 8. Uh, maybe the Amplified. It's a mindset. We need to know who you are. So, so Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8, he says, to me, though I'm the very least of the saints, God's consecrated people, this grace, favor, privilege was granted and graciously entrusted to proclaim to the Gentiles the unending, boundless, fathomless, incalculable, and exhaustless, exhaustless riches of Christ, wealth which no human being could have searched out. Remember, he says he became poor, that through his poverty we might be rich. He took our poverty. We took his riches. That's the exchange. We can never be broke. It's, Im it's impossible for any Christian to be broke, even if they wanted to be broke. In reality, they are not, because we are heirs of God, of these riches of Christ. Wow, wow, wow. Let me go back here real quick. All right, so Pastor Chris says, don't believe anyone who tells you rich people might have a problem um, getting to heaven. Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Solomon, and many others in the Bible who walked with God in an extraordinary manner were rich and are, and are all in heaven. It says, Rich, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, and see what God does. He lifts the poor and homeless out of the garbage dump and gives them places of honor in royal palaces. This is God's idea. He lifts the poor and he sets him up to sit on the throne. Pascal says some people have remained poor only because they inherited it from their minds. Not because they were born poor. Poverty is in the state of your birth. Neither is in it a government engineered problem or the absence of required necessities. Rather is when a, man, when a man's mind and his mental prowess, his flow of thoughts become disabled. It is the disabling of a man's prowess. That means you can only inherit poverty by thinking the way poor people think poverty or wealth is from the inside it's from inside you wow 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 that's the best definition of um, what it means to be poor it has nothing to do whether you have the required necessities or not it is in your mind it first begins in your mind the disabling of your mental prowess your mental abilities and thinking like the poor people think right now i just read to you about how christ we have an unsearchable riches of Christ. If these are your thinkings, you won't think poor. Because you know you're a kid of God, you're born of God, you're an inheritor of Christ, or you're a joint heir with Christ, you cannot be poor. So your thinking won't be like that. Your thinking will be based on God's word. So the question is, what's your thinking based on? God's word is what gives us the right mentality, the right type of thinking, to think the right thoughts, to know who we really are. Not what the world tells us we are. Not because of, of your bank account or what you have or what you don't have. No, you are rich already. Despite of what your bank account say. You could be in minus zero right now. If there's something like that. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. You're rich anyway. Um, Pastor Chris actually says, he says, That you don't have a house or a car doesn't mean you're poor. The question is, can you see the house or the car inside you? It's about, it's about your mind. If you can see it, you can have it. 
The fact that you don't have any money in your bank account does not mean you are poor. Your status is in life is independent on the amount of money that you can touch. How much can you see in your heart? Yeah, man, you know it's crazy. This world has limited us to our bank accounts. I just read to you, unsearchable riches of Christ, wealth that no human being can search out. You can put that in a bank account. If God was to, to put all the wealth that we own and, and contain it, look, let's go back here because you need to understand your bank account should not define you. Let's read this one more time. It says, to me, though, I'm the very least of all the saints, God's consecrated people, this grace, this favor, privilege granted me and graciously entrusted me to proclaim to the Gentiles the unending boundless meaning you can't bound it you can't you can't contain this world you can't put it in in a box you can't put it in a bank account fathomless it is deep incalculable you can't calculate it you can't put it all this is how much you have uh, put your bank card pin and you can tell you how much you got left no it's incalculable it's exhaustless riches of christ wealth which no human being could have searched out you can't put this in a bank account so you can't limit your wealth saying, oh man, my bank account, I don't have this. That means I'm poor. No, that's man's way of calculating riches and wealth because they're not heirs of Christ. So they can limit their wealth based on what they have and what they don't have. But if you're a Christian, your wealth is not in your bank account. You have boundless wealth. The wealth of the world is yours. Number one, the world is yours. So it's regardless if it's in your bank account or if it's not in your bank account, the world belongs to you and the money belongs to you. So it could be in, it could be in even someone else's bank account. The wealth of the world is yours anyhow. That's important. So he said, um, the fact that you you don't have money in your bank account doesn't mean you put your status in life is independent on the amount of money you can touch. How much can you see in your heart? That's how you draw, we draw the money. It's by your faith. You, 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 you put your faith to work. Whatever money you require, you release it from your spirit. You claim it from your spirit. You don't look at your bank account because the world is yours. I'm not saying, oh my God, no, I should not look at bank account. No, nothing matters. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm trying to say you're not defined by your bank account. You're not defined by the things you have. You're defined by who you are in your spirit. And the word belongs to you. You're Abraham's seed. You're an heir of God. So all that he has is yours. That's your wealth. That's your true worth. Not your bank account. It says success or prosperity is from inside you. Based on who you are. What you have on the inside. Whatever finances you require will come to you. Never forget that. So work on being and not on having. Glory be to God forevermore. Let's take this confession together. I'm an heir of God. I join heir with Christ. The world and the wealth therein belongs to me because I'm the seed of Abraham. Blessed be God. I have a beautiful and glorious inheritance in Christ. Hallelujah. You can read further studies in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, Proverbs 23, 7, Romans chapter 12, and verse 2. And if you follow a one-year Bible plan or two-year plan, the scripture is right there. Pick whichever one that suits you. I hope you've been blessed by today's devotional. Make sure you leave me comments. I appreciate all your comments. Thank you very much for taking your time to leave me comments. I appreciate it. I read all of them. And may God bless you and increase you in all that you do. Um, I want to give you a chance. If you're not born again, this is your chance to receive salvation. Because Jesus died for you. And to become an heir of God. So I want to lead you into a prayer of salvation. Just say this after me. Oh Lord God. I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. I believe he died for me. And God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. If you said that prayer, congratulations, you're born again. Make sure you leave me a comment. Until tomorrow, be victorious. It's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.